the treasure of my heart and of my soul. Lord, in my weakness, you were merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs, you're the holder of my future days to come. You're the treasure of my heart and of my soul. And in my weakness, you are merciful. The Redeemer of my past and present wrongs You're the holder of my future days to come Now your presence is heaven Oh, your presence is heaven to me, Lord hey, Your presence heaven to me Jesus your presence is heaven to me lift your voice and say your presence is heaven to me Lord your presence oh is heaven to me Jesus Christ, we thank you, we lift you and we glorify your name. You alone are God and we are here, O oh Father, for your sake. We surrender in your presence, O oh Father, that you may lead us by your Holy Spirit, that you may guide us, O oh Father, in your word, O oh God, that in everything we say, Lord Father, it shall give you all the glory. And Father, for those ones who are joining us from different places, God, we pray that you may visit them, O oh Father, and meet them at the point of their need. And this morning, O oh Father, as we study your word, we want to pray, Father, that you will enlighten our minds to God, enlarge our hearts, that we are able to capture the revelation that you're giving us this day. We thank you, Father, we lift you, for it is in Jesus' mighty name do we pray with all thanksgiving. And everybody say amen. amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Today, this morning, I would love to encourage us, all of us who are here and all of us who are following online, I want to encourage us that we are a walking testimony. All of us are a walking testimony. I'm here to remind us that even though you feel like God has forsaken you, though you may feel like God has been far away, you are a testimony in the presence of Jesus Christ. He has given you a testimony. You are a walking testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, the testimony that we bear in Christ Jesus is a testimony for his gospel. And many times we forget to testify. We forget to give the testimony of what God has done in our lives. And today we're going to look at the book of John. We will look at John chapter 1, chapter 5, 
verse 1, we will go up to verse 23, just going through the word of God and learning a few things here and there. But just before we go to John, allow me to make an introduction and say that we have three ways of making the word of God spread to the entire world. Number one is the word of God, which is the Bible printed. Maybe it is on made in media form. Maybe it is spoken. That is the word of God written. That is how we can spread the gospel. The Bible in itself has been testified to have spread the gospel and someone got born again just by reading the scriptures. And as we said last week, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The second way is by us speaking this word. Preaching of this word like we are doing now. As we preach the word, which the scriptures call words. The Bible says when Jesus preached these words, many believed. As Peter arose and preached these words, many believed. So preaching is another way. But today we want to focus on your testimony being a vessel for preaching the gospel. That is why I am saying you are a walking testimony. Let no one look at you and tell you that God has forsaken you. God has done something to your life. He has woken you up this morning. You are breathing. You are alive. You have the strength. You are a walking testimony. And our testimony is a tool. It's a vessel in which we can preach the gospel of Christ. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, we are reminded and we like quoting this verse, but I would pray that we start living this very word. The Bible says, and they overcame him, that is the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. <clears throat> and they did not love their lives to the death. They did hold their lives dear to death. They testified. The testimony that we make, we make a testimony, it helps in the spreading of the gospel. There are people in this world who cannot believe in the words that we speak. Even Jesus himself said that some of you have believed what I have spoken. But better are they who will believe because they have not seen. And he says, though I preach this, many will not believe, but rather believe in the works. When you believe in the works, you believe that Jesus was sent from heaven. So not everybody will be spoken to and they will listen. Some of the people we have at our working places, in the marketplace, when we visit them at home, they have to know the testimony of what God has done in your life. Then they will see that indeed God is great. Hallelujah. Our testimonies are not for hiding under the bed. Our testimonies are for proclamation. So that when we proclaim the testimony of God, as we proclaim this testimony, many will be able to receive Jesus Christ and believe in him. So I know many of us, God has given them testimonies. Spiritual breakthroughs, financial breakthroughs, things in life that people laughed at you, yet you received, but God gave you this as a tool to spread his word. I know many people do not know how to give a testimony. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, many Pentecostals do not know how to give testimonies. Because at the end, we do not see God, but we see them in the testimony. The testimony of Christ is meant that Jesus is lifted in the things that he has done in our lives. So, and sometimes we may be going through hard times, or your testimony is small. Or maybe yesterday you received a, something which is miraculous, today you have not. Does it mean you lack a testimony? No. No. We always must see every circumstance, the best way to live. And I do this myself. And I pray that everybody would do this. That the best way to live in this life is to see every circumstance in the eyes of eternity. That not everything is ending today. Whether it is good or bad, it does not end your life today. Does it take you to eternity? Do you see God in it? Do you see heaven in it? When you live in such a way, you will be able to glorify Jesus even for taking your breath. You will glorify Jesus for eating that bread in the morning. You will bless the name of God because you know that everything you have is not yours. It belongs to God. By his mercy and by his grace, you have received and therefore it is a testimony. Hallelujah. 
Because most people will not give a testimony saying this is too small a testimony. That small testimony is a great tool for preaching the gospel in Christ Jesus so that the gospel may go to the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus. So seeing every circumstance, whether you are in sickness, see Jesus in it. Whether you are full, see Jesus in it. Whether you are healthy, see Jesus in it. Whether you have money or not, see Jesus in it. Paul says, I'm, I have learned to abound. And I have also learned to be in lack. But in all things, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So my question to you is, whatever you are going through now, whether it is joy. You know, some people are going through a joy and they become so anxious. Praise be to God. Some people are going through pain and they are very anxious even in the pain. When you see Jesus in it, then the anxiety will not be there. But this is the truth about life. This is the truth about life as we read the book of John chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible says, after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five porches. The Bible says in this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time in the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Praise be to Jesus. What we read from these particular verses is that the, in life there will always be a contrast. When we compare our contrast from another person, you will fail to give your testimony. Praise be to God. God will, buy, God will make way for you to have a bicycle. But when you meet someone who has a car, you will hide the testimony of your bicycle because the other has a car. God has afforded you to rent a house or to have a mortgage and you meet a person who has something better. Hallelujah. Then you don't want to give your testimony because you feel yours is small. There is no small testimony. There is a contrast in life. We've seen in these particular verses that we are reading that these men have been here for a long time and one of them has been here for 38 years. Hallelujah. Each and every year, sleeping and sitting and just waiting for someone to put them in. The misery of 38 years is too much. Yet for 38 years, other people have been passing through the same, same place to go to a feast. Because this feast of the Jews was not a one-time feast. It was a yearly feast. So for 38 years, people have been feasting. Yet this man has been sick. The truth of life is this. When you are going through trouble, people will not stop. Life will not stop. Kenya will not stop. Hallelujah. But Jesus will stop for you. Praise be to Jesus. Jesus will always stop for you. So when we're looking at people, when we're looking at government, when looking at the society, at the systems of this world, which does not stop for us, what will we say? We will say, everyone has forsaken me. But when we look to Jesus, he will always stop for us. Hallelujah. When we complain about circumstances, when we complain about the systems of the world, we will not think we have a testimony. We will always think that everybody is better than us. Hallelujah. But look at yourself. Look at what God has done. This man's life was not being bought. This man was not in oxygen. This man for 38 years has been there, but in his heart is full of complaints because he says there was no one to put me in the pool. Hallelujah. Instead of thanking God that at least he is alive. Once you are alive, there is a chance for you. Only the dead don't have a chance in life. But once you are alive, it doesn't matter how hard your situation and your circumstances are, how hard the situation in your house is, how hard the situation in the church is, you have an opportunity to get a testimony from God. 
but life will continue. No one, things will not stop. Hallelujah. You know, this is the truth. I, I remember sometimes I have also gone through some trouble in life. Praise be to God. And when I go through them, in the first times as a believer, I expected everything to stop. Hallelujah. Let the service stop. Let people attend to me. Let the government stop and attend to me. Let the parties stop and attend to me. If you're having a birthday party and I am sick, I would feel bad. Why would you have a birthday and I am sick? You see? That is how we are sometimes. But let us not, let people in fact encourage them to continue with life. Thank God that you're alive for they had, don't have the power to give you the testimony. Only God has it. Hallelujah. I have heard of people who have fallen out of church. I was in a condition and no one came to visit with me from the church. No one came to do this. And maybe one person visited them. And they don't see that person as a member of a church. They think that is just another person. One person visiting you. One person calling you from the church is by the grace of God. Be thankful that at least there is someone around you. But life will not stop. It is the bitter truth I had to learn. And after that, I live more peacefully. I encourage people to continue with their weddings when I'm having a funeral. Praise be to God. Life will not stop. But Jesus will stop for you and give you a testimony. Let us not look to the mountains. Let us look to Jesus, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he will give us something. Hallelujah. So God knows and Jesus knows your situation in the name of Jesus. Now, as we go to verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, and he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Verse 7, the Bible says, The sick man answered and said, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Hallelujah. Another steps down before me. This man, when I read this story, sometimes I look at people who fear competition. Hallelujah. They fear competition. They give up because other people have succeeded in front of them. Everybody has his own time. Everybody has his own time. Hallelujah. We all have these excuses. Hallelujah. Jesus came with a very simple question. Do you want to be made well? But you see, when you have not managed the contrast of life, when Jesus begins to speak to you, you will bring the contrast that you have seen. Oh, they have gone for parties. Yes, they're, they're smiling. And I am crying. Yes, they're doing this. So this man here has an excuse, a perfect excuse. No one is there to put me in. Yet Jesus is asking, do you want to be made well? So we all have excuses right from the book of Genesis. We can see in Exodus, Moses has an excuse. God wants to send him. He says, I am a stammerer. Jeremiah says, I am a little man. The disciples say, we are just fishermen. My question to you is, what is your excuse? Hallelujah. Receive your testimony. Receive your miracle even this day. Forget about what your dad did to you. Hallelujah. Forget what your brothers did to you. The question is from Jesus, do you want to be well? Hallelujah. The question is not what have they done to you? Because every time you're looking at man, you will have disappointments and it will not help you to answer the question right. The answer would be a simple yes. Hallelujah. In Kenya, we have something we say, maraho, maraho, maraho. That will not help. What will help you now now is Jesus is working today. He testifies and says, my father is working even now. What is your answer? Yes. I want you to go and preach. Yes. I want you to share your testimony. Yes. So long as God is asking and Jesus is asking, what do you want me to do for you? Do you want to be made well? And that is why I love Bartimaeo. What do you want for me to do for you? And Bartimaeo say that I may see again. Simple. And he's made well. One as if you were sana. So you must know what you want in the presence of the Lord. And not only in church. Even at home. God can ask you something right in your living room. What do you want me to do for you? What would be your excuse? Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now again we have to avoid that blame game of blaming this one and blaming the other. 
that will not answer the question. Christ is always speaking and in that still small voice he wants to speak you today and he has come to make you whole and is asking the question, let not the environment dictate how you will answer the question. The environment around us, the people we are living around, the people we are working with, the culture we are coming from, you will start, oh, you know us as Luos, we must do this first, Apana. In Jesus Christ, just answer his question. The environment doesn't matter. Other people will have religion and they will say, you know, in our church, we have to sing first before we pray for a miracle. No, that is not what Jesus is asking. Jesus is not asking about religion. He's asking about what is in your heart, what is your desire. And if you did not come with a desire from home, or maybe you tuned online and you don't have, you had not created that desire, you still have time to create a desire within you and Jesus will meet it. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reading verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, Jesus said to him, rise, take your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. Immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Hallelujah. And that day was a Sabbath. There is another problem. Hallelujah. He was healed on the wrong day. With Jesus, there is no wrong day for healing, no wrong day for miracle. You cannot say, Jesus, don't go give me a miracle here. Wait until we have revival in the church. You know, some people are waiting for revival and prophecy meetings for them to have miracles. Miracles happen even in Bible study. Hallelujah. When, I remember there was a time we were in class and we were reading up there, uh, the pastors of the church. We had a college here. And when we were in that class, I remember miracles taking place right there. People come and before we start class, someone says, I think I am very sick and I'm, I'm almost fainting. I remember that was Brother Gregory. Hallelujah. Sorry for sharing your testimony. I want, after this, I want to go to, to the hospital. Can you guys pray for me? And we, before we started our class, we prayed. After prayers, he was well. He never went to the hospital for typhoid again. He was healed. Another sister of ours came and said, you know, this ear is not even working. This ear is, I, if, if I do this, I cannot listen to anything. I cannot hear anything. Then she said, could you please pray for us? We laid our hands on him together as a team. And after, before even the class, she was okay. Testimonies don't wait for the timing of man. Testimonies are in timing of God. God's own time. It may be on the road. It may be in your kitchen. It may be in your car testimonies still happen. I'm not saying that testimonies don't happen in church. They do happen. What I'm saying is when God has opened the door for that testimony, it is time. No one can stop it. Hallelujah. So allow Jesus to stretch his hand and to bless you. They are saying, and it was the Sabbath, a wrong time according to religion, but according to Jesus, it was the right time. Hallelujah. All we have to do is go by the word of God. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says there are people in the olden days, they heard the gospel, they heard what was taught, but they did not believe in it. The Bible says, for indeed the gospel <clears throat> was preached to us as well as to them. <clears throat> but the word which they heard did not profit them did not give them a testimony, did not give them a breakthrough, did not give them a miracle. Why? Because not, mixed, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. They did not mix the word, what you're hearing from me. Don't just listen to it as an information. When, what you're hearing during praise and worship, don't listen to it as information and entertainment. When you listen to the main service of the preaching, listen to the word, mix it with faith, and I'm telling you, miracles will happen. Praise be to Jesus. Fix your eyes on the faith that God has given unto you. When the word comes, it is like the faith has already opened your heart to receive the miracle. When I went to Mombasa last, last month and we were there, there is a lady who had cultivated her faith. We don't know what happened to her, but she just woke up one morning and she could not see. Totally when she came to church, when she heard we were going to Mombasa, she said, I'm coming. Because men of God are coming from up country. And she came being led by someone in a hand. And she came in to church. During the altar call, she came to the front. And she wanted to be prayed for. With a human mind, I was like, hey God, I know you healed blind people in the past. 
Hallelujah. But just by faith doing what Christ has instructed, lay your hands on the eyes and pray over it. I'm telling you by the end of the service, she was leading worship, she was seeing. Testimonies happen each and every day. Miracles are still happening. Is your heart full of faith? So that when this word comes, inaingia ndani na inaanda kitu flani. Wakati neno la Mungu linakuja lisije tu na kupata kwamba moyo wako uko mkavu. Acha moyo wako ujae na imani. Wakati moyo wako umejaa na imani, neno linakuja linachanganywa na inafanya miujiza. Hallelujah. When the word of God finds faith. When the word of God finds faith. Brethren, when the word of God finds faith, nothing will stand on your way. Praise be to Jesus. That is why Jesus says, keep the faith until the end of time. And he's asking, when I come, will I find, will the son of man find faith on earth? What he wants is your faith. Everything else he has. Hallelujah. He doesn't need your bank account. He doesn't need your tribe. He doesn't need your race. He doesn't need anything. He needs your faith. Do you have the faith? When these people came to him and they were healed, he said, I have never seen such great faith. Jesus is looking for those who have faith. If you have faith, the word of God will come. The word of God will move mountains in your life. The word of God will raise the dead. Hallelujah. We asked another lady, do you have the faith? We went with Pastor Alfred to her house. We asked, do you have faith? This is what the doctors have said. But we are praying for a reversal of it. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. And we said, simply lay your hands on your stomach. And the baby who was supposed to operate and had hydrocephalus and the head was big and all that, they went back to the hospital, the head had come back to normal in this very church. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I'm not saying this because there are men and women of God who can do miracles. I'm saying this because this is the testimony of Jesus. My father is working even now. Hallelujah. He is working in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to Jesus. Verse number, number 10. Verse number 10, the Bible says, the Jews, now these are the Jews who are come. The Jews therefore say to him, who was, uh, who was cured? Is it not the Sabbath? It is, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Now, it doesn't matter what people will say. What did Jesus tell you? In every testimony, and this is very important, in every miracle that God has granted you, in every testimony that God has granted you, even the breathing that you're breathing, there is something God has instructed you to do with it. Are you doing that? Hallelujah. He says, I don't care what you religious people are saying. What I care is this. That he who made me well, I don't know him. But he who made me well, I don't know where he comes from. He who made me well, I don't know his profession. But he who made me well gave me an instruction. And the instruction is, pick up your bed and walk. Because that was his miracle. His miracle came because God wanted the, that, 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 that faith in him to arise and do something. You know, in healing, they call it, there is a name they call it in Greek, but this name means you do something, I do something. That person who we seek has to do something as the person ministering does something. Hallelujah. We do it together. We do it together. We do it together. Your faith does something. The man of God does something in faith. Unless, of course, you are bedridden and you're dead. Because Lazarus was dead, Lazarus could not respond to faith. Therefore, the faith of Jesus as a friend raised him from the dead. The lady in Naim who had a sick, a, a dead child, the dead child could not respond to faith, but the mother responded to faith on behalf of the, of, the, of the dead son. Praise be to God. And many other people. The person who was bedridden, carried and coming, coming from the roof, he came from the roof, he was paralyzed, he could not talk, he could not do anything, but four friends of his had faith on his behalf. I'm saying you can have faith on behalf of someone. Someone who does not respond to the gospel, they are dead in sin, you can have faith on their behalf. Someone who is not open to listen to the gospel, you can have faith on their behalf. In the name of Jesus and they will receive the healing in the name of Jesus. Your testimony may be criticized. But do not be afraid. Some testimonies are criticized because they are too small. 
and people will tell yako pia nikaushuda kwa kwenda kuambia watu praise be to god it doesn't matter what they say you tell your testimony as it is god gave you galians kuma wiki as a breakthrough you are almost sleeping hungry thank god and testify there is someone who wants to hear that praise be to god others will say your testimony is too big it will intimidate the church give it god granted you a chance to get 100 million give the testimony there is someone who wants to hear the testimony hallelujah some will say the testimony is too shameful bwana sifiwe sana that testimony of yours is too shameful to give to the church <laughs> ah, hallelujah i'll give that testimony another time bwana sifiwe sana is a testimony that people would have deemed shameful but this lady stood up and gave her testimony because it is not man who gave the breakthrough it is god who gave the breakthrough praise be to jesus hallelujah so god uses our testimony to spread the gospel and we must know that the testimony of the samaritan woman is that her life was touched by the words of jesus she went with this testimony to her village and she said come and see a man who has told me everything the demoniac in gadarene in mark chapter 5 after being healed by Jesus wanted to follow Jesus said Jesus may i follow you lord and Jesus said no go to your own people then the bible says he went to the decapolis and preached the gospel there and many believed because of the testimony that testimony of yours big small maybe looks shameful ama maybe i don't know how it looks in your eyes that testimony someone is waiting for it and it will help in the spread of the gospel in the name of Jesus so the testimony of Christ the testimony of Christ is this that Jesus that God my father is doing something even now bwana sifiwe sana so my question is are you ready to respond to what Jesus is saying are you ready to respond to what Jesus is saying in the name of Jesus if you do this if you do this god will be with you now as we finish verse 17 As we read that testimony about Jesus verse 17 the bible says but Jesus answered them my father has been working until now and i have been working hallelujah let me repeat that again Jesus is saying this my father has been working until now and i have been working but remember the third aspect is this you have also been sent to work So this is what we are saying Jesus is working God is working his servants are working yours is just to believe yours is just to believe and God will bless you praise be to God so in verse 18 the bible says therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the sabbath but also said that God was his father making himself equal with God Then Jesus answered and said to them most assuredly I say to you the son can do nothing the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do for whatever he for whatever he the father does the son also does in like manner whatever the father does the son is also doing Hallelujah. Jesus never healed anyone that God had not yet that not already healed in heaven. Jesus did not raise anyone unless God the Father had raised that person in heaven. What I'm saying is this, that everything we see physically begins spiritually. Whatever we perceive now to do is what God the Father has done. This is what I believe. Whatever I am preaching now has already been preached in heaven. Praise be to God. So it is not my words, it is Jesus' words. He is preaching that we may receive faith. He is preaching that we may activate our faith and begin declaring that you are a walking testimony. Don't say I don't have a testimony. In Kenya we say aliye na mwana hakosi nini ushuda. You have a testimony. Be confident that your testimony was a result of what happened in heaven. Do not ignore it. That small testimony, that flu that you are healed was healed in heaven. It is a great thing. Hallelujah. That job of 5000 that you got a breakthrough miraculously, it is not a small job because God did it in heaven. If God saw that this testimony is too little, he would not be concerned. But he did it 
it is a testimony. Share it with a friend. Share it with a church. You're not sharing it because you're bragging. You're sharing it because you want to glorify God. So as a son, we have to continue doing what God is doing. Not what God will do. What God has done. And I want to declare this morning that God has done great things in the heavenly places. God has healed many people in the heavenly places for today. God has provided for many people in heaven for today. God has opened doors for many people for today. He has already done it. He's done it. It is finished. All we have to do is to step into the blessing. When the word comes, mix it with that faith that you have and you will see God's breakthrough. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, you are great. There is no one else like you, Father. And we thank you for the gift of life, which is a great miracle that has happened to us. For no man, no machine, and no science can give life but you alone. This life that you have given us today, Father, is established in heaven, and therefore, Father, we live it as a testimony in the presence of men, O oh God, in the presence of our peers, glorifying your name, the Lord Jesus, you've given it to us. Father, we thank you for each and every person that you have blessed in the past. The Lord God, you've given them a miracle, O oh God, for a testimony for the glory of your holy name. And we thank you, Father, for the people that you're going to bless today. The people that you have already blessed even in this study that we have heard. King of glory, we pray that as we utter this testimony, may it be a vessel for the gospel to glorify the name of Jesus that many will see and thirst for your kingdom and that many will be drawn to you, O God, that their lives will never be the same. The Lord, you will change their lives also. Father, we want to thank you and we want to bless your holy name. For those of us who are watching us online, Father, we pray that you may meet them at the point of their need. As they have raised their faith, meet them with your word of power. And Lord, grant them the miracle they desire. The miracle they desire this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We lift you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to thank each and every person who's been here in the auditorium. Let's give God a hand of praise. And for those of us who are watching online, we want to say thank you so much, Asante Sana, for being with us. This is Believers Fellowship Tabernacle Church. You are free to make this your home church. If you are around Kisumu, come and visit with us. And we thank you for the support that you have always accorded the church. We cannot do this without your support. Good morning, and may God bless you in Jesus' name.